Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Channel. My website is teamchicago.tv. My email to contact me is teamdan45 at gmail.com. We're at the International Motorcycle Show for 2020, Rosemont, Illinois, Donald Stevens Center. And we're gonna look at some of the new bikes for 2020. So we're gonna look at what is new, what is uh, exciting, some stuff that's really new to me. So we're gonna show you all of that in the next 20 minutes on this show on YouTube. And don't forget my email to contact me, let me know what you think of the show. It's teamdan45 at gmail.com. We're gonna kick off today's show by looking in the Yamaha booth. I should point out that I actively raced Yamaha motorcycles road race from 1989 to 2009. We're looking at the R1M. This is a 1000 sport bike. The R1M has better suspension components and a little better package of parts. But both the R1 and the R1M are beautiful looking and great high performance street bikes. But my favorite bike beyond all bikes is the R6. 600 cc. I began racing the R6 in 1999. Raced that through 2009. Great handling, great engine performance, great on the racetrack. All around a good entry level bike for someone that wants to have a great time riding motorcycles. One of the longest running dirt bikes is the YZ250. They've been making YZs for many, many years. Two stroke engineering. Yamaha may have some of the best two stroke engineering. I've been able to race these bikes. Not that I motocross, but off road using basically that two-stroke engine. Yamaha also makes four-stroke dirt bikes, 250 and 450 motocross bikes, and a complete line of off-road bikes. I should approach Yamaha. They should provide me with a newer off-road bike so I can produce five or six or seven shows this year riding off-road. We are now looking at the MT-07, which is a twin. I got to ride this bike at the Freedom Run, another great all-around street bike. I was pretty impressed. My good friends at Rich's Yamaha let me borrow that MT-07. We are now looking at the Nikon. The Nikon is the three-wheel motorcycle. It's got an 847 three-cylinder engine that is fuel injected and has two front wheels that work together. I had the opportunity to ride one last year at the Riches Ticket to Ride, Riches Yamaha Ticket to Ride. This bike was created to give better feel in the corners. I could not tell if it had one wheel or two wheels in front, it was that neutral, but it's aimed towards the rider that wants modern innovations. Next to the Yamaha booth was the Honda booth. And I spotted this old Chevy truck. I sort of remember the Honda representative showing up at Ace Cycle World on Western Avenue with a pickup truck painted that color. Honda is celebrating 60 years in the United States market. Ace Cycle World on Western Avenue was one of the largest Honda dealers. And that was one of my last sponsors racing my Triumph. And now we're looking at the RC 213B, 
This is the Moto GP bike rode by Mark Mosquez. He won 55 Moto GP races. He won six GP championships. And over the span of eight years, he won at least five races per year. You can see this bike is approximately the same size as the R6 Yamaha, but it puts out nearly double the horsepower. It's great that Honda has put this great bike on display. And we are now looking at the 2020 Fireblade CBR 1000, and Ben Hall from American Honda is gonna tell us all about this new model from Honda. Hey, how you doing? I'm Ben Hong from American Honda, and this is the new 21 uh, Honda CBR 1000 RR Fireblade. It's our special edition, our SP edition, uh, brand new motorcycle for this year, and it's essentially our, our race homologation motorcycle for the world this year. Um, four cylinder, 1,000 cc's, uh, Olin suspension, just kind of trick, uh, our trick race motorcycle. It's a, it's a beautiful bike, um, HRC parts, HRC um, development motorcycle. So, really exciting. So, anything new in the engine that has been changed that you can Yeah, think there's of? quite a bit. I mean, we've got our uh, uh, DLC coating on the cams, it's our diamond like carbon cams, uh, it's got finger follower uh, rockers in it. I'm trying to think of what else we've got in this. Um, it's got the electronic suspension. I'll take you around here to the front. Again, it's that uh, the Olin's electronic suspension. It's the second generation, so that's the Olin's EC uh, 2.0. Shocks on it, shock and um, NPX fork. Um, so those are the big major changes, and then of course a high, high horsepower output. So what kind of horsepower are we looking at today? We're, we're actually kind of not talking about our horsepower numbers, right, but right. It's, it's very, very competitive, and we'll show that in World Superbike. So go into your Honda dealer uh, this spring to check it out. I'll be hitting dealers in spring. So uh, we just announced the MSRP. It is $28,500, so go in and uh, you know check it out. Thank you, Ben. In order to race the Fireblade in World Superbike, this motorcycle has to be available in all markets around the world. So the average guy can buy the same bike that they will be racing in World Superbike. And now we're looking at the Royal Enfield trailer. I should point out it's 73 years that India got their independence from England. But Royal Enfield Motorcycles is a cooperation between engineers in India and engineers in England. We are looking at the 650 twin. As you can see, this bike looks like a genuine British classic motorcycle. 650 cc's twin motorcycle, modern technology, fuel injected, beautiful motorcycles. They also have the 500 single, and they got the 411 Himalaya Adventure Motorcycle also at your local Royal Enfield dealer. Over by Harley-Davidson, I spot something that is very new. This is the new Pan American from Harley-Davidson. It's a sport adventure touring bike making 145 horsepower of a brand new V-twin engine. The smaller version making 115 horsepower is the Street Fighter, a sport bike for the urban community. Harley-Davidson, as you can see by the sketches and the working at the factory. They are stepping up to the challenge in 2020. And now we're gonna to talk to Paul James. Hey, I'm Paul James with Harley Davidson Motor Company. And I'm here to talk about two new motorcycles coming from Harley Davidson late in 2020. 
So this is the Harley-Davidson Pan America Adventure Touring Bike on my right. On my left is the Bronx Street Fighter Motorcycle. Now these are all new motorcycles with entirely new powertrains. The motor is the Revolution Max engine. And the motor is actually a 1250cc displacement in the Pan America, making more than 145 horsepower. And on Bronx, it's a 975cc variant that makes more than 115 horsepower. So these are new motorcycles, new markets for Harley-Davidson. It enables us to reach many new customers around the world. So in fact, today, with our current lineup, we reach about 35% of the overall 650cc plus market in the world. With these two motorcycles added, it will give us 85% reach around the world. So these are two markets, the street fighter and adventure touring market, that are really important globally for Harley-Davidson. Okay, one question. How big is the world market to Harley-Davidson? What percentage you sell bikes here sure. compared to the rest of the world? Yeah. So for Harley-Davidson, we currently sell most of our motorcycles in the United States. Our intent, as part of our More Road strategy, is to sell more motorcycles globally than we sell in the U.S. We currently sell more than 50% in the U.S., and our intent is to sell more than 50% in internationally. So the Harley-Davidson name is still respected worldwide. Yeah, of course, the Harley-Davidson brand name is recognized and respected around the world. However, in many markets, customers are looking for motorcycles and have different product attributes that our current products have. So for example, in some parts of the world where the roads are really rough and rutted, an adventure touring motorcycle makes perfect sense with longer travel suspension and dirt road ability. In some inner cities where you have um, upright riding position sport bikes being the dominant motorcycle, a street fighter makes perfect sense there. So it, it really is gonna, gonna enable us to reach new customers. Thank you, Paul. And I am gladly surprised that Harley Davidson is designing new motorcycles starting in 2020. That Pan American, I'm very interested in I hope Harley Davidson will allow me to borrow one and take it off road and see how well the Harley Davidson performs riding off road and on road. Also in the Harley Davidson boot is their new live wire electric motorcycles. It has a range of 146 miles in the city two ways of charging the electric motor, and seven ride modes are offered in this electric Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Check it out. We are now gonna see what Suzuki has to offer. We're gonna look at Bobby Fung's Suzuki 600, GSX-R 600, this is the bike that he won the Moto America Super Sport class with. Point out that Jim Rashid and Ed Hilton from Foreign Six Cycle were the first sponsors of Bobby Fung. So I am sure the suspension setup information and how to make the bike go around the racetrack that he learned from Jim Rashid was a big part of Bobby Fung's success. Alex Rains rode the MotoGP in 2019 on this Suzuki. He won two races, MotoGP in America and MotoGP in Britain. It's a 1,000cc inline four-cylinder engine. This bike weighs 346 pounds, and you can see the carbon fiber steel front brakes on this Suzuki. We're now looking at the 2020 Katana, which is bringing back an old model. And I do believe that this 2020 Katana captures that Teutonic look of the old Katana from the 1980s. I do love it when a company like Suzuki puts a cutaway engine on display. It gives you a great opportunity to see what is going on inside of one of these modern engines. You can see the finger followers 
that are below the cam. The cam is red, you see the finger followers, and they push the valve up and down. You can see the valve stem underneath the spring setup. We're looking down beyond the piston. The piston is cut away and you can see the top of the connecting rod. It gives you a great view of what's going on in these modern engines. And now in the Kawasaki booth, we are looking at the fastest motorcycles that are sold to the public, the H2. And what they are promoting is the naked H2, meaning that this bike here has no fairing. So they got the naked version, they got the lesser expensive version, and then they also have the H2R, which sells for $55,000. I should point out these are 1,000 cc engines, but they are supercharged and they make 300 horsepower and are capable of running 249 miles per hour. Not that you need to ride that fast, and maybe this shows the decadence of America and Japan, but it's nice to know that someone is striving to make the best. Supercharged power from Kawasaki. Also in the Kawasaki booth, we spot the twin cylinder W800, which is a throwback to the old British look that Kawasaki is bringing forth. So they have the super modern bikes and they also have great looking retro bikes. Indian Motorcycle is showing off four different models. You got the FTR 1200, which looks like their dirt track race bike, but this is a 1200cc bike putting out 123 horsepower. The Chieftain is using the original B twin engine that Indian developed, big torque. It's a 116 cubic inch engine in the Chieftain. The Scout has a 69 cubic inch engine. It's 1133 cc's and it puts out 100 horsepower. This is Indian's entry level motorcycle. And then the Challenger has the new engine. It's 108 cubic inch, puts out of 122 horsepower out of this new design V-twin engine. I had a great time at the 2020 International Motorcycle Show and I learned quite a bit. To contact the International Motorcycle Shows, their website is MotorcycleShows.com. To contact me, it's TeamDan45 at gmail.com. Drop me a note, let me know what you think of my production from the International Motorcycle Show in Rosemont, Illinois. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action. Dan Schmidt Politics to learn what makes America great.